رسول الله حبيب الله رسول الله حبيب الله الله our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him he wanted humans to be the best and give his best religion to them Allah our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him he wanted humans to be the best and give his best religion to them السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Praise be to Allah, we praise Him and we seek His help Whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one and whomsoever Allah leaves us say none can show Him guidance May the best peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him My dear viewers, welcome to another live edition of our program Gardens of the Pious Today's episode is number 446 in the series of explaining Riyadh al-Salihin by Imam al-Nawawi, may Allah have mercy on him. And it will be the fourth episode in a study in chapter number 194, Bab Fadl al-Saf al-Awwali wal-Amru bi-Itmam al-Sufufi al-Awwal al-Awwal wa taswiyatiha wa tarasi fiha. The excellence of standing in the first row in the prayer and the command of perfecting and lining up, straightening the first rows and making certain that they are all straight and filling in the gaps. We studied quite a few hadith over the past couple weeks in this regard, three episodes and today is the fourth insha'Allah. And with the first hadith in today's episode, hadith number 1090. عن البراء بن عازب رضي الله عنهما قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وكان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يتخلل الصف من ناحية إلى ناحية يمسح صدورنا ومناكبنا ويقول لا تختلفوا فتختلف قلوبكم وكان يقول إن الله وملائكته يصلون على الصفوف الأول The hadith is collected by Imam Abu Dawood in his sunan May Allah have mercy on him In this hadith Al-Bara ibn Azib May Allah be pleased with him and his father narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, used to pass between the rows from one end to the other, touching our chests and shoulders, the manakib, in order to arrange the rows. In the line, and he would say, do not be out of line, otherwise your hearts will be in disagreement. And he would add, indeed, Allah and his angels invoke blessings upon the first rows. From the obvious meaning of the hadith, it reflects the importance of straightening the rows. And we could perfectly understand that from two things. How the Prophet wasallam would tap on people's shoulders. Like if somebody's shoulder is, you know, going to the front or to the rear, not in line, going out of line. So the Prophet ﷺ would make certain that they're all straight. And he would look at it as we studied in the previous uh, episode, like he would use those arrows to make certain that the rows are straight like the arrows, subhanAllah. What does this signify? When somebody examines the practice of the Prophet Sallallahu which is narrated by many of the companions, in numerous occasions, before saying Allahu Akbar, he would pass between the rows. He said, min nahiyatin ila nahiyah, from one end to another. So he may actually finish lining up the first row, one end to another, and he will go to the second maybe the third 
to make certain that the rules are straightened. That is because he considered taswiyat al-safi min tamam al-salah or min iqamat al-salah as it was mentioned in two different narrations. Lining up in the rows and straightening the rows in the prayer is a part of the perfection of the prayer. Is a part, an inseparable part from the establishment of the prayer as it is mentioned in the hadith. So this is the first significance. The second, whenever there is a warning, so according to the diversion meaning, if he says, if you don't do that, then he threatens or he warns. So that means doing that thing is a must. It's not just me recommended. And that's why he would pause and he would walk between the rows from one end to another to show us this is really important. Obviously nowadays, especially with the magnitude of people, it's impossible for the imam to go back and forth between all the rows. And it's not only the duty of the Imam. The Prophet ﷺ used to check out the first couple of rows and he would say, instruct the Ma'mumin to follow the first and the second row. But it's also the responsibility of every Musalli to fill in the gaps, as I mentioned. In the Haram, people who like to come late and they pray next to the door, the rear door, or doors, leaving ahead of them a huge space, could be tens of meters, empty. But those who are praying outside the masjid, they assume that the masjid is full. Likewise, last time, last Friday, a couple of days ago, as I was giving the khutbah, you know when the imam is on the member, he could see what those who are sitting couldn't see especially our members are very high. So I asked the congregations to move forward. And some people thought, well, there, there is no room. But in fact, I could see from up there that there is plenty of room to take double the number of the musalli and those who are attending. So lining up the rows is the duty of the imam as well as the musalli as well. If you find a gap before making takbir, move forward. A question for you, Sheikh. What if this gap is created after we started the prayer? And I see there is about 10 meters, 5 meters ahead of me. What am I supposed to do? Do nothing. Stick to your line. Because walking this long distance in the prayer would invalidate the prayer. If it is one or two steps, it's okay. Like jump into the first row, the row ahead of you to fill in that gap, fine. Otherwise, it becomes a duty of those who are coming late to move forward to fill in those gaps or even rows, complete rows missing in between. And he would warn, say, لا تختلفوا فتختلف قلوبكم. He would say, don't you be out of line, otherwise your hearts will be in disagreement. Indicating that the physical disagreement may result in moral disagreement. How? The scholars of hadith say the word qulub here may also refer to, as it is mentioned in another hadith, wujuh or faces. When the person is in the line, and he's trying to approach or fill in the gap and the person next to him is distancing himself from him. And this is very common. That creates aversion and disagreement. And this physical disagreement creates moral disagreement as a result of physically not lining up in the rows and filling in the gaps. That's a natural result. And then he admired he praised and he prayed for those who will complete the rows and fill in the gaps. Especially those who will make certain that they pray in the first rows. He said, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala suhuf al-awwal. Al-awwal, plural of awwal. So 
the first rows, first, second, third, especially when the masjid is huge, are more blessed than those who pray in the rear. And it is mentioned before, خَيْرُ صُفُوفِ الرِّجَالِ أَوَّلُهَا The best of the rows of men are those which are the first. First, second, third. Sometimes you go very early and mashallah, ten rows are already complete. The masjid has over a hundred rows. So the first ten rows are all. First twenty rows are all. You know? You made an attempt. You tried your best to come early. In Allah wa malaikatahu. Verily, Allah and His angels. You do, they do what? You salloon. As salah literally means a dua. Linguistically, as salah means a dua. So when we pray, what do we do? We invoke Allah from beginning to end. So we invoke Allah. We pray to Allah. We ask from Allah. But when Allah says, Allah, you salli ala sufuf al awwal, what does it mean? Allah blesses and accepts the dua of those who pray in the first rows. And when we say the angels pray for those who are in the first rows, they invoke Allah to bless them, to give them extra blessings. All the congregations, everyone who's attending the prayer and congregation, and those who are praying at home, everyone is blessed. But the blessings are not alike. Those who are praying in the masjid are more blessed. They have a greater blessing. And those who pray right behind the imam have greater blessings than those who pray later. Those who attend from the first part of the prayer, which is known as takbiratul ihram, have a full blessing versus those who come late. They are blessed, but they are not as much as those who have come from the beginning of the prayer. Because this question is frequently asked by people when they read in Surah Al-Ahzab, So the verb is the same, يُصَلُّونَ which literally means they pray. What does it mean that Allah prays for the Prophet? doesn't mean anything. But the actual meaning is that Allah blesses the Prophet and he raises him into her ranks and he accepts the salah of the angels when they invoke Allah to bless and send his salutation upon the Prophet. So he accepts their dua, their salah. All who you believe you too should join the angels in making dua to Allah to bless the Messenger of Allah. So that is the meaning of in Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi then ya ayyuha alladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Alright. The following hadith is narrated by Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhuma anna Rasool Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal aqimu al-sufuf haadhu bayna al-manakib suddu al-khalal وَلِينُوا بِأَيْدِي إِخْوَانِكُمْ وَلَا تَذَرُوا فُرُجَاتٍ لِلشَّيْطَانِ وَمَنْ وَصَلَ صَفًّا وَصَلَهُ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ قَطَعَ صَفًّا قَطَعَهُ اللَّهِ Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated in a hadith number 1091. In the seas of Riyadh al-Salihin by al-Imam al-Nawawi, may Allah have mercy on him. He narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Aqimu al-Sufuf, arrange the rows in order. Hadhu bayna al-Manakib, stand shoulder to shoulder. Suddu al-Khalal, close the gaps, do not leave gaps. Leenu bi-aydi ikhwanikum. Be accommodating to your brothers. لا تذروا فروجات للشيطان Don't you leave gaps for Satan. وَمَنْ وَصَلَ صَفًّا وَصَلَهُ اللَّهِ And whoever joins up a row and fills up a gap in a row, 
he will be joined to Allah, blessed by Allah. He will be eligible for Allah's mercy. وَمَنْ قَطَعَ صَفًّا قَطَعَهُ اللَّهِ And whoever cuts off a row, he will be cut off from Allah's mercy. Ya Shaykh, we come to the masjid to be blessed, not to be cut off from Allah's mercy. As I mentioned earlier, everyone who comes to the masjid is blessed. Everyone who makes an effort to attend the prayer and congregation is blessed. But the blessings are not alike. Someone will be blessed more than others. And someone will be blessed, but his, his blessings is not as much as others. Based on what? Based on the effort that the person makes. Somebody is walking a longer distance. Somebody who came earlier. Somebody who entered the masjid and he saw there is a little gap by the end of the row, but next to the shoe rack. A lot of people avoid it because the smell of the shoes, so they avoid it. He said, no, I'm not going to leave this gap empty. So he fills in the gap and he stands in that. So Allah the Almighty is happy with him. Why? Because he took the initiative and he filled in the gap in the first row or the second row rather than going back one off. It's all about the concept of competition. Taking the initiative and trying to be better than others when it comes to doing good deeds. And that is instructed in the Quran in multiple ayahs, in Surah Al Imran, in Surah Al Hadid, in Surah Al Mukaffifin. You find Allah is calling upon the believers, Wasari'u, raise you all together. Be quick, you all together. And then in Surah Al Hadid, Sabiqu. Another invitation to race, to race towards doing good deeds, munafasa, competition. Who's going to call adhan? Who's going to pray in the first row? Who will come to the masjid first? Who will earn greater thawab? And then when he talked about paradise and its water wells, he said, وَفِي ذَلِكَ فَلْيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ Concerning that, let the competitors compete. I'm going to the masjid to earn more hasanat. I'm going to the masjid and I'm staying after the prayer a little bit because I have loads of bad deeds. I want to wash them off. Don't you take your car to the uh, car wash often, especially after heavy rain and when it was muddy? Yes, I'm muddy. I need to be washed off. So I go to the masjid. It washes off my sins. And I sit after the prayer. It blows away the sins that the person have committed between the prayers. That is the meaning of man wasala saffan wasalahu Allah. Allah is encouraging the believers to fill in the gaps, not to leave gaps. On the other hand, some people may do the opposite. They are kind of, they feel themselves a little bit superior or he wants to distance himself from that person. So the role is he's the last one to come. But instead of joining the row, he distances himself. And he prays by himself, leaving a gap. Why? For whatever reason. So he deprived himself from Allah's mercy, which he promised. Whoever connects a row and fills in a gap, Allah the Almighty will bless him and will grant him mercy. And man wasala saffan, Allah. The following hadith is uh, hadith number 1092 narrated by Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu anhu. Did you just realize brothers and sisters how many a hadith was studied in respect of the importance of arranging the rows? Hmm? How many? Many. This is the fourth episode. And we still have some more ahadith. It shows the significance and the importance of arranging the rows in Islam. And being united physically in order to be united morally. And to melt our hearts together in this huge melting pot of faith and of the prayer. An Anas radiyallahu anhu, anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, 
رصوا صفوفكم وقاربوا بينها وحاذوا بالأعناق فوالذي نفسي بيده إني لا أرى الشيطان يدخل من خلل الصف كأنها الحذف hmm. We've learned in the previous episode in a sound hadith how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded the companions as before they started the prayer he said straighten your lines be careful I can see you from behind my back and we established multiple evidences confirming that there have been hundreds of tangible miracles given to Prophet Muhammad and many others to prophets before him one of them was being able to see from behind his back without physical eyes to see physically not just to be informed the Prophet ﷺ happened to capture shaitan once and he was about to tie him and fasten him in one of the poles of the masjid then he said this guy came and he wanted to interrupt my prayer so I captured him and I was about to tie him and fasten him against one of the poles of the masjid so I remembered the supplication of my brother Suleiman, Prophet Suleiman. What did he say? He invoked Allah. Rabbi habili mulkan la yanbaghi li ahadim min ba'di. O Allah grant me a domain, a kingdom, okay, which is not to be given to anyone after me. So he didn't want to compete with Prophet Suleiman. Otherwise, he could have captured him and fastened him so that people could see him. In any case, in today's hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, besides commanding the, the companions, line up, straighten your rows and all of that, what did he say? He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, stand close together in your rows, keep nearer to one another, and put your necks in line. For by him in whose hands is my soul, I see Satan entering through the opening and the row like the hadaf, which is the type of a small black sheep, normally found in the southern of the peninsula or Yemen. Oh, subhanallah. So those gaps which we leave, brothers and sisters, between each other when we're standing and each one of us wants to stand on his own, is disliked. Because those gaps are being filled by Satan's. And somebody said once, oh, so you mean that while we're standing in the prayer, shaitan may stand uh, in between us if we leave gap well this is good for him at least he can join us in the prayer I don't know if this is a joke or if you're taking it lightly we believe in the unseen correct very correct we believe when we say Allahu Akbar we are standing before the Almighty Allah and he's seen us we cannot see him we're talking to him he can hear us we're invoking him and he answers our invocation we're being surrounded by angels whom we've never seen and also we studied earlier that the prophet sallallahu said whenever the muazzin says allahu akbar satan flees he takes off while breaking wind like you know somebody was stepping on uh, on the gas violently and the pickup of his vehicle is like fire he takes off. He cannot tolerate hearing the adhan. Then he said what? Then when the Mu'adhin finishes, when we are praying the sunnah, he comes back. Why? To do his business, to manage his business. Shaitan doesn't need to go to a nightclub. Those guys are well taken care of. They don't need his assistance. Perhaps they know their way better. But he needs to be around the musalleen. To try his best to mess up their prayers. And that's why many of you call and say that I'm having a big problem in the prayer. I lose khushu'ah. I think a lot. I daydream and I lose count. Correct. The Prophet ﷺ answered this question of the companion when he said that, you know, I, I lost concentration in prayer. He said, this is shaitan by the name Hanzab. He interrupts the person in his prayer. So that's a reality, even though we cannot see them. And the Quran says so. Innahu, referring to Satan, Yarakum, huwa wa qabiluhu min haythu la tarawnahum. Satan and his hosts can see us while we cannot see them. 
So prevention is better than cure. Fill in the gaps. Do not leave gaps between you and the person next to you. Then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, فَوَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ إِنِّي لَأَرَى الشَّيْطَانَ يَدْخُلُ مِنْ خَالَلِ الصَّفْ كَأَنَّهَا الْحَلَفِ He told us, I could actually physically see Satan filling in the gaps, if you leave gaps between your feet and between two people in the room. From that we understand, brothers and sisters, it is really serious, it is really important, and it is a part of the perfection of the prayers, and it is a part of the establishment of the congregational prayer to line up in the, in the rows in the prayer, not to leave gaps, and to fill in the gaps and the ends of the rows to begin by the first, then the second, and the third. May Allah bless us all, accept our prayers, and grant us khushua in the salah. We still have a couple more ahadith in this chapter, but inshallah to be continued. When we come back from a short break, we'll be back in a few minutes. Please stay tuned. A messenger after a messenger after a messenger ending with our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, Prophet Hud alayhi salam, Prophet Saleh alayhi salam, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, Prophet Musa alayhi salam, Prophet Isa alayhi salam, and our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A series of the lights of guidance, discussing the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, learning from their lives, going through this exciting, amazing, informative special journey with the lights of guidance on Huda TV where we will discuss together, where we will live together with each and every prophet in an amazing episode, learning from them, pondering upon their experience, meditating upon their life, relating to it and getting lessons that affects us in our life to be the servants and the followers of those prophets and the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will be discussing this series of lights of guidance. So be with me and join me in this beautiful series so we learn together and we pass it through the next generation. So please join us on Huda TV. I will be with you in this amazing journey. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Parenting and child education set forth challenges and opportunities for parents, teachers, and children to make up a successful society. Do our schools teach critical thinking properly? Do our children have the necessary skills growing up to make proper decisions that they'll need in the workforce? Do parents and teachers speak the same language? For all this and more, join me, Abdul Azim Saeed, and guest Dr. Mamdouh Mohammed, an expert in education, in our special new series, Back to Basics. Stay tuned, inshallah. One day the Prophet ﷺ came out to the companions عنهم, and he said to them, Don't you bear witness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship and he has no partners? Don't you bear witness that I'm the messenger of Allah? Don't you bear witness that the Quran is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? 
So the companions of the Allah they said, Yes, O Prophet of Allah. Then the Prophet وسلم, said, فأبشروا. Have the glad tidings, the great news as a result of this. Because the Quran has two ends to it. One end with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one end in your hands. Then he said to them والسلام, Hold fast to it because you would never be led astray and you would never be perished if you're holding fast to the book of Allah. Because of that, join us every week in Quran in depth where we recite and reflect and ponder over the verses of the Quran. We go in depth into the verses following the ways of the Prophet وسلم, and the companions عنهم, when they used to take the verses, one set of verses after another. They would recite it, they would reflect upon the meanings of it and they would act according to it and then they would go to the next set of verses. Join us every week in Quran in depth so that we would recite and reflect and learn more about the book of Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our life and to make us among those who follow the Quran and the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. As usual, our phone numbers and contact informations should appear on the bottom of the screen for your reference. And in this segment, we open the opportunity for those who would like to give us a call or ask questions, the priority of questions relating to the topic, obviously. But here I would like to reply to Sister Muna Alwi, who says, my dad has had range as he had surgery. He doesn't go to the mosque since the surgery. It's been a week now. Can he resume going to the mosque with the drainage? The drainage is sucking the bad blood out of his body and so on. He had a hernia surgery. I begin by making dua for you, your dad, and your family. May the Almighty Allah give him a quick shifa. Asallahu al-Azim, Rabb al-Arsh al-Azim, an yashfiyahu. شفاء لا يغادر سقما لا بأس طهور إن شاء الله. Secondly, yes, if he wants to go to the masjid, he is definitely permitted to go, even though he has a concession to skip going to the masjid until he takes the drainage out and until he completely recovers. إن مع العسر يسرى. Once there is a hardship, Allah delivers ease. So as we say that it is according to Imam al-Shafi'i. A communal duty to attend the congregational prayer in the masjid for men, or according to others, it is an emphatic sunnah, and so on. But people with valid excuses, they are exempt and they can pray in jama'ah at home. But if he wants to go, then it is definitely permitted. May Allah give him uh, shifa. Uh, the following hadith is hadith number 1093. Anas <laughs> anhu. أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أتم الصف المقدم ثم الذي يليه فما كان من نقص فليكن في الصف المؤخر Great Anas, may Allah be pleased with him narrated a messenger of Allah peace be upon him explain how should we line up in the prayer he said complete the first row first then the one next to it and if there is any deficiency, then it should be in the last row. What people do by avoiding the two ends of the rows for a reason or another is not permissible. We should make certain that the first row is complete on both ends. Then if there is any gap, fill in the gap. And then afterward, you can move to the next row. And it will begin right from behind the imam, right and left, right and left. The imam should be in the middle of the row. And also, when somebody comes late and there is no one whatsoever to join him in the last row, 
Some people do the practice of tapping on somebody's shoulder or withdrawing, pulling somebody from the row in front of them so that he can join him in, in the row not to pray by himself. The hadith is talking about La salata li munfaridin khalfa saf if he chose not to join the saf. If there is a gap, if there is a room in the row ahead of him, but he decided I like to pray with freedom, with plenty of room and space, so he avoided joining the saf and he prayed by himself, then his prayer is invalid. But if you come to the prayer, the imam is about to make ruku'ah, and no one with you to make a saf, you can pray by yourself, and you don't have to bother somebody who's already in the prayer, or pull him from his clothes to join you. The following hadith, we're approaching the end of the chapter, by the grace of Allah. Hadith number 1094, An Aisha radiyallahu anha qalat, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إن الله وملائكته يصلون على ميامن الصفوف. The hadith is collected by Imam Abu Dawood in his Sunan. And before I share with you its meaning, it's a weak hadith. It's a weak hadith. And accordingly, we do not establish any hukm based on that hadith. So, since it was listed in the collection of Riyadh al-Salihin, we'll study it. But as it is our tradition since we started this program years back, whenever we come across a weak hadith, we tend to explain to the viewers. Sometimes there is a weak hadith supported by other sound a hadith. So the meaning is correct. We act upon it. And sometimes a weak hadith may initiate a new verdict or ruling. Then it becomes problematic. We got to rely on what is sound. In this hadith, Let's learn its meaning and see if it is something odd or it is supported by other sound a hadith as far as the meaning. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Allah and His angels, again, yusalluna. I just explained the term yusalluna when it comes to Allah and His angels in the first segment. Ala mayamin sufuf. So Allah blesses, the angels invoke Allah's blessings upon those who are in the right side of the rows. I said this is a weak hadith. And the sound meaning is in Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala alladheena yasiluna as-sufuf. That makes a big difference. So here the priority is and the virtue and the excellence is for filling up the gaps, connecting the rows, yasiluna as-sufuf. We studied that in the first segment. Not those who keep the jump to fill in the right side of the row and they leave the left side completely. And they may begin another row while the, the row ahead of them is still empty because they want to fill in the right first. According to Imam Malik, may Allah have mercy on him, there is, ne, there is no precedence, no superiority for the right over the left when it comes to the prayer. The superiority is for praying closer to the Imam. as al awal as we studied in the sound hadith in the first segment. Allah blesses the angels pray and invoke Allah's blessings for those who attend the prayer in the first rows. The closer to the Imam has a greater blessings, but they're all blessed as mentioned earlier. The following hadith is a sound hadith collected by Imam Muslim. And it tells us how the companions interpreted the love of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam to the right whenever it comes to any choice. Aisha radiallahu anha narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he would love and he always loved to use the right and begin with the right, right hand, right foot, right side and everything to lie down on the right side. Shake hands with the right hand, to eat with the right hand, to drink with the right hand, to enter the mission with the right foot, to enter home with the right foot. Okay? To leave the bathroom with the right foot. And so on. يُحِبُّ التَّيَامُنَ فِي كُلِّ شَيْءٍ 
He loved the light in every aspect. So Al-Bara ibn Azib narrated that whenever we used to pray, Kunna ida sallayna khalfa rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallama ahbabna an nakuna an yameenah yuqbilu alayna bi wajhi fasami'tuhu yaqul rabbiqini athabaka yawma tabathu ibadak. The hadith is collected by Imam Muslim. Al-Bara ibn Azib said whenever we offered the prayer behind the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, we like to be on his right side so that his face might turn towards us at the end of the prayer. And by the way, the Prophet ﷺ would turn sometimes right and sometimes left and he would face the whole congregation. So one day I heard the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, making dua after he finished the prayer and he turned towards us, where he was saying, Rabbi, qini adab, my Lord, my Rabb, protect me against your torment. Yawma tab'asu ibadak, on the day when you will gather or resurrect your servants. That's a beautiful dua. So now we also keep this dua in our prayers. And especially after the prayer. Rabbi qini athabaka yawma tabaathu ibadak. Rabbi qini athabaka yawma tabaathu ibadak. My Lord, protect me against your torment on the day when you will gather your servants or resurrect them. That leads us to answering the same question which was answered before so many times. Can I make dua after the prayer? Yes, you can. But the practice of after the prayer the Imam will recite the adhkar out loud and join the whole community and recite together and make dua together is something that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him used not to do it. Neither him nor any of the companions after him. But there are prescribed supplications and adhkar to be recited after the prayer. And if you feel like making dua after there is no problem. Especially after concluding any good deed, when you make dua, when you pray, when you invoke Allah, your supplication is most likely to be accepted. Last hadith in this chapter, brothers and sisters, hadith number 1096. Hadith number uh, 1096. An Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم <coughs> وسط الإمام وسد الخلل أبو هريرة may Allah be pleased with him narrated that the messenger of Allah peace be upon him said let the imam stand in the middle so that those who are praying behind him should be standing both on his and on his left side and Suddul Khalal, which is the subject of this chapter. Yani, fill in the gaps, close the gaps, again and again and again, over and over and over. Wasitul Imam is a prophetic instructions, and he was his practice. In the beginning of the chapter, we studied how Jabir ibn Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him. When he came and he found the Prophet ﷺ was praying, so he stood to his left side. So he turned him around by his own hand and he moved him to come to stand to his right side where they were parallel to each other on the same line. If you and another person, male and another male, female and another female praying in congregation, they should be next to each other and not one of them is ahead even a few steps or a few inches of the other on the same line, like a row. So Jabir ibn Abdullah stood next to the Prophet ﷺ, and there came another person. So the Prophet ﷺ moved him back where he became in the middle of him and ahead of them. So this is the right setup. And people come to pray to the right and to the left, as we say that Imam Malik uh, dismissed the hukm of the weak hadith which we mentioned so that people would not accumulate on one side of the road rather they fill in both sides right and left and the priority is for those who pray behind the imam whether to the right or to the left 
Then, if there is any gap, whether you find it on the left side or the right side, jump to fill it in as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you for that. Brothers and sisters, uh, we only have a couple minutes left and we need to begin a new chapter to prepare ourselves for a new chapter I'm going to give you something to think about it then insha'Allah it will be the introduction of our new episode insha'Allah that is how often you daydream in your prayer how often when you fast uh, you commit things which we know that they may affect our fasting how often when we go for Hajj or for Umrah we get angry, we uh, indulge into an argument or quarreling and then we regret. Think about it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Abu Aisha from Sudan, Assalamu alaikum. Ya Abu Aisha, Assalamu alaikum. Okay. Abu Aisha, please try again. We still have just a couple minutes. So I'm going to address the, uh, the intro of the new episode, inshallah, right now. So what happens after we indulge into an argument or quarreling in Hajj? People come and ask Sheikh, uh, do I have to give dham? Do I have to give a fidya? And, and, and people after praying and having a lot of thoughts in the prayer, they often ask, Shall I repeat my prayer? I feel like I haven't prayed yet. The answer to all these questions will be presented, insha'Allah, in the following episode. But now let me wrap it up by taking this call again. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan. Welcome to the program, brother. Go ahead. Thank you, Shaykh. Jazakallah khairan. Um, I just want to ask a question on this topic, the last hadith you talked about, where the, if two people are praying, they have to be on the same row. Mm. What happens if, for example, somebody is praying with you, like you are leading the salah, and then and the person who is following decided to take a step backwards? Mm. Maybe if you try to pull him also, he still keeps that distance a little bit. Mm. away from you so i don't know what do you do in that instance you do and, nothing um, will that salah be accepted as a jama or what okay actually you do nothing because this is not a fight in the prayer you gotta focus on your prayer if you're not that there is something fixable you can fix it like by pulling him towards you so that you'll be on the same row great or you step back a little bit so that you line up with him fine but if he's insisting then do nothing. Resume your prayer and both your prayers are valid. Then after the prayer, you can explain to him whatever we said earlier. Brothers and sisters, by the grace of Allah, we finished with chapter number 194 and we're also through with the time for this episode. Until next time, I leave you all in the care of Allah. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته رسول الله حبيب الله الله our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him he born in humans to be the best and give his best religion to them Allah our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him he born in humans to be the best and give his best religion to them. So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about him in paradise, worshipping cows, fire and stones, selling the best with the cheapest price. So Allah, Habib Allah.